Hello my beautiful ladies and gentlemen, you guys are welcome to this tutorial brought to you by the Louis Art. My name is Emmanuel Okafo and in this tutorial I'll be showing you guys how to model clothing in Blender. Basically um, the first case will, uh, case example will be just creating a simple jersey and we'll be going through the entire workflow. So we'll be creating the, the whole modeling process of creating the jersey with the socks. Um, we'll be creating the textures and finally rendering it. So if you're up for that, let's get started. I have loaded a generic human model from Make Human, um, which we'll be using to create this character. And I'll be using some advanced techniques, um, but I will do well to show you how that works. So let's start by creating the shots because it's the most uh, is the under layer before the shirts jersey so like i said we'll be using some advanced techniques so um you can also look at my shortcuts um that i may um, click on um, so you can follow along so for the shots what i would do quickly is to click here and add a simple cylinder so this might look quite different from your default and the reason is because i've done some changes to the default presets so for you to be able to do that, um, you can click on this drop down here or you can go to edit, adjust last operation. So here you can choose um, how you want it to be displayed. So I want this to be about 12. I want the cap fill type to be nothing and I will just click away. So we are good to go. So we can place the cylinder right here. Um, so just um, start the whole process of creating the shirt. So I will move this up slightly and now I want to apply a quick mirror modifier. So you can go here selecting your object and go to the modifier setting, select mirror and click on the object. So it's going to mirror that. Um, so I want to do some changes here or enable some pre um, changes. So I'll click on clipping and click on, uh, click on this edit mode preview. So now we can just quickly extrude this and join them together. So like I said, I will show you some quick advanced technique with um, an add-on which I created that can make all this process easy for you. So in edit mode, um, this add-on which is Retopo Matte, uh, which is more than a modeling tool. Um, so what you want to do is just click on quick mod uh, modifier, mirror, quick mirror modifier, and it's just gonna add the mirror modifier. Everything is set up for you. You can still switch the mirror object that you want to reference from and you can make all the same changes which you could make here okay so once you have that you can select those vertices extrude it like we did earlier and now uh, we want to extrude this upwards but before we do that we need to fill the spaces so a quick way of kind of just extruding faces like this is just selecting this point and hit um, F so once you do that, it's going to extrude some faces there. So we'll do the same thing, F, and extrude some faces there. Now we'll grab this point um, by holding down Alt and clicking. It will select the edge loop, so we'll just move it up slightly. Okay? And we'll extrude it some more. So the next step is select everything and apply quick shrink wrap modifier. So we'll do, um, we could try it with this um, plugin, uh, um, which is quite helpful. So so it can just um, confirm to the shape. Um, it's doing adding some awesome modifiers, uh, which I can show you how it's adding that. So we, the first modifier it adds is a shrink wrap modifier. So we'll select this object, okay? And then it's applying a corrective, it's uh, um, it's setting it to above surface and target normal. Okay, and then it's also adding another shrink wrap modifier. And same thing above surface and target normal project. So we can kind of offset it this way. So we can adjust it. And then it's adding a smooth corrective to allow you kind of 
adjust the topology because the blender default um shrink wrap usually mess up the topology so um, this corrective smooth can fix that so you can just play with the values to get the effect um, but like i said this modif um, this add-on is more than just a retopology tool it also aids in kind of conforming objects to um, assets quickly and it's quite powerful because um, it can just work on just selected parts so i can just select this part and do quick shrink wrap and it only applies it to that selected part so um, you can check out this add-on this the link will be in the description um, so let's keep going i'm just gonna select this part and quick shrink wrap adjust that so we have the pants conforming i will add some edge loop and do the quick shrink wrap so as you can see the, the corrective smooth is what's basically adjusting the topology to kind of be nice so we'll it creates the symmetry again we'll scale this on the z-axis zero and we'll add some edge loops there quick shrink wrap and we'll kind of extrude it outward slightly Okay, so we are almost done now with the shorts. So it's just going in and adjusting it. So we can select everything and do the quick shrink wrap one more time just to make sure it fits in nicely. And we'll switch to sculpt mode and his eye for the inflate brush which you can select here and just kind of move things around and depending on the style which you're going for you probably want to make this a bit bigger so we'll bring the proportional edit brush scale it up slightly scale it on the z-axis just flatten and let's create um, the hip Extreme crop again. Okay. We'll add an edge loop um, bevel it. Quick shrink wrap. And we'll extrude it slightly. So you can do all of this in Blender, so it's not you don't have to do um, achieve this with the add-on, but this just makes the whole workflow quite easy to um, do that. Um, basically this add-on is a combination of all the simple things I do in blender that usually takes a lot of time because of the repetition process so once we have the shots looking like this um, we can add a level of detail with blender cloud simulation which um, shouldn't take any time so what we'll do now is add a subdivision and then go here and add the cloth um, physics we'll set this to collision and we'll play with, we'll set this to linear and just hit play. So what we basically, what we basically want is for it to just feel more natural. So there are a few settings which you could play with. Um, those are the structure. So the lower this goes, the less it's going to try to maintain the original structure. So higher value of the structure is going to probably, you're just gonna retain the original shape of the model. So let's go like 30. Okay, and for the bending, it also tries to retain the structure to prevent it from, from bending so much. The shear is basically, same with the structure. Um, the way I would like to look at this is, this is for the um, Z structure. That means it's if, if you, this is set to zero, it's not going to maintain the structure going this direction. Oh, sorry. The animation is still playing. So if the structure is set to zero, it's just going to kind of drip down um, like gravity is kind of expanding it. Uh, for the shear, it's going this direction. So it's going to lose the tightness um, and kind of expand in the X axis. So I don't know if that is clear, but um, that's roughly what's doing. So let's do that again. 
so we set this to 30 so we can see it's maintaining that upward um, form and if we set this to zero so it becomes freer in the kind of x-axis part so you can always add like vertex group to restrict things but i don't want to i like how it's looking and we can go ahead and apply all the modifiers so a quick way to do that is go to object quick effect i'm sorry um, object um, where is that convert mesh so it's going to apply all the subdivisions and you have a nice shot it's going to apply all the modifiers i don't know if i say that well okay so let's create the shirt so for the shirt it's basically the same thing um, but for that we'll use another technique uh, which is still possible in Blender, but this add-on makes it quite easy to get it. So I will show you the technique quickly. Um, it's kind of almost like a retopology process that you just use the, uh, the retopology process to confirm the uh, mesh onto the object, and then you can modify it from there. Um, and in the future, I hope to tackle more complex clothing styles. So we're we'll looking at creating suits and kind of more commonly used clothes and we'll probably try some even sci-fi clothing so we have this simple plane here that we've added um, we can go ahead and add the mirror modifier okay and basically start snapping it onto the cloth using the snapping enabled here and setting it to face so enable the um, edit mode preview but one thing you can see immediately is you you start losing the visibility of the plane itself, um, which is quite inconvenient. Um, so one thing you can do to improve this is go here and add a solidify modifier and just adjust it so you can start working with your snap turned on, of course. Okay. So this is a very, um, has been the way I've, I worked. Um, another technique for you to be able to preview your mesh easily is using the displace modifier. So I will just enable it in edit mode. So this is how it looks. So it's all procedural in real time. So any changes you make is going to think it's snapping on the geometry, but there's an offset. So you can set this mid level to zero and the strength to something low, like 0.1. So you can still preview your mesh. But um, like I said, this add-on um, helps with it. It's called Retopo Mat. Um, so you can switch to EV and select this plain object and click on Add Retopo Material. Select this character and add reference material. So this is how we look. So we can also select this and set it to a reference material. So we can select this object um, by default that you have the wireframe. So it helps um, basically in retopology process. And as you can see, no matter, without even adding any of that, you can still see through your mesh. And you can adjust the alpha in case you don't want to make it very transparent or you can even turn it off totally. And all those cool modifiers we're adding earlier, like the thickness, you can do it here on the fly with all the materials set up for you. Or you can add those offset nicely. Okay, um, so let's just use this. Um, so for the shirt, um, basically, you, you just need to create some landmarks, and after you create those landmarks, it becomes quite easy for you, for you to for you to quickly generate um, the shirt shape very quickly. Um, so th those landmark is creating the nice color. So depending on how your reference design is, um, you might want to go further up the neck. Um, direction so something like this so since this is a jersey so this is what the, um, this particular style of clothing requires so once you have it here we'll add another edge loop here and quickly just extrude it downwards or set this back to okay so you just keep extruding it till it comes round like this okay 
So once you have this part, you want to select, I'll in increase the vertex size. So you want to select this two point and actually downwards. And then you add edge loops here. So once you add the edge loops, um, what you can do is quickly create like a vertex group, um, or you can just go into this view, hold on, uh, just click it. It's going to snap onto the geometry. Or you can do the quick shrink wrap, and it just snaps onto it like that. So you can select everything, quick shrink wrap, and it works. Okay. So you select the front part, extrude it downwards, add a couple of edge loops, big shrink wrap, and it snaps. And it will do for the back side, extrude it downwards, add a couple of edge loops, and quick shrink wrap. So all these things, like I said, it's possible to do in Blender without this add-on. This just speeds up your workflow tremendously. Uh, so all you just need to do now is select each point and click F and you extrude like a bunch of faces. So that's what we'll just do quickly. By the way, you can change, easily change the color of this to something that you're more com comfortable with. I'll click on that and just keep filling up the faces. Okay, so now for the back side. Okay, so we keep just selecting the point, hit F. And it extrudes the face. And then finally, oh, we still have a couple there. So once you're done, you can select everything and apply a quick shrink wrap modifier. You can just do this quick shrink wrap and everything will come from so like you see um, because it's confirming to this particular object um, it's this part is not working as it should so we'll select it and do quick shrink wrap so instead of the object we'll select this plane so if it says i'm uh, sorry we want to select the cylinder which is the shot and as you can see on the fly it's confirming to that so it's very convenient and it's only applying it to the selected um, part of your mesh. So let's scale this on the Z axis and apply quick shrink wrap. Okay. So let's fix the symmetry stuff here. So just select this part and move it. So for the um, kind of sleeves, um, it's quite easy to. So once we have this nice um, circle here selected, we'll extract it downwards and can apply the quick shrink wrap. So you can always play with the settings. So if I select the quick shrink wrap, I can move it downwards slightly, play with the scaling, the factor, kind of have a smooth and stuff. can also play with the effect of each shrink wrap. And we have it looking all nice. And once you're done, you can just remove the material. Remove material. Remove material. Okay. So we can, holding down Alt S, just bloat it up slightly. And we have our base for the shirt. I'll just fix all the symmetry. And apply a subdivision but before I do that I will add the seams for the object um, for the UV which I will probably do it later so we could tackle it as like its own um, issue so I will add a subdivision modifier and 
here I want to add an extra edge loop to kind of keep the form based off the design. So I want it to look something like this. Okay. And then we'll add the cloth. So make this a collision object. I will set this to linear. Okay, and so we could play with the shear. So if I set it to zero, that's what we get. I will increase the bend, kind of increase them, um, give it a nice tighter structure. And let's see if I reduce the shear, um, the structure to 0.2. Let's see what we get. Okay, so I like how it's looking. If you see it's not really interacting with the collision object like you want, you can select the collision object and just set this to zero. So it's going to be tighter when it's it sits very well on the mesh now um, okay so once you're happy um, like we did earlier we can go to object quick um, convert mesh and at this point you can always adjust in some more okay and yeah, it's just finalizing the design um, if you want to create like specific maps for it you can take it to Z ZBrush or just sculpt higher details in Blender through Blender's multi res modifier okay so I like where we are now um, next step is creating the socks so for that we can just add a simple cylinder Okay, um, extruded downwards. Extrude it one more time. Move this slightly up. So something like this. Okay. And I will select these three points and do Ctrl F grid fill. Okay, so we can add more edge loops here. Selecting everything, quick shrink wrap, and it just wraps around the leg. And then you can play with how you want it to be distributed. Okay, so we we'll probably need more vertices here. So inside the sculpt mode, I will just adjust this. So like I said, you can see I achieve all of these with Blender modifier because that's basically what's happening here but this just makes it quite intuitive so we'll just smooth out those kind of harsh corners and adjust it in the sculpt mode and now we can just adjust this scale it on the z-axis and try to reference the the uh, reference object basically um, so in a situation where you don't want to model some creases um, you can select you can just create edge loop select particular faces add a bevel and if you do ctrl i to reduce the selection you can just either pull it out on or in so set this uh, select this part and move it out well, basically creating like a nice crease here crease here so I will select this point do the same thing bevel 
we select the two endpoints so we kind of have like a nice taper effect so if i add the subdivision it seems like a nice um nice crease going around that area you can always adjust this so it blends in nicely by selecting an gg it's not perfect but it's kind of a nice way which is a bit more stylized but um, it works okay so we can do quick shrink wrap one more time and see Um, the problem is um, the topology we have here, um, which is from a cylinder and doesn't fit well with this angle area. At least it doesn't provide a lot of geometry or a nice way to increase geometry without messing up other areas. Uh, so that will probably be a better solution for that, but I'll just leave it for now. So I can select this and do the quick mirror modifier. And there we have it. We have the jersey ready. And now let's go in for kind of enhancing the details and kind of pushing it. So I can select this edge loop and just move it in slightly, scale it out. Okay. Um, so looking at the reference, I know we have some creases here. So we could have done this with the mirror modifier, so we kind of speed up everything, but this still works. So. Okay, and then you can select these two points. Control B. So we have this nice seam here, and then we Alt S it slightly. Okay, and then for the final intervention for kind of stuff like this is you will go into your scope mode, and let's bring this up to be bigger. So once you get the pinch brush. And just pinch it together so it's not so obvious kind of brings it together we we'll probably want to grab the move brush and just free this part up okay so I'll save this now for the texturing the, for the UVs and texturing um, which will be the next stage of this um, the first thing we want to do is kind of determine how we want this to the kind of groups of object and material so do we want both of them to share the same uv and material and or all of them to basically share, share the same uvs and materials so once you have decided that then you can go from there so i basically want them to all share the same uvs and materials um, so for that, um, let's start creating the UVs. So I'll just select an edge loop there, holding Alt click. So you have now, if you want to select multiple loops, you hold Shift Alt, as you can see from this indication. So we'll do the same thing here. So we want to kind of break it up into different parts. So I will do maxing, and if you switch to face, you can L L. And it's just going to select the island base of the UV seams and hide it. And I will create another seam here and create it. So I will hide this for now because I want to create a seam here. So probably here. Okay. And for this one, I will just mark a seam at the back where it's a bit hidden um, because sometimes no matter how good your UV is 
especially if you're not really paying attention you might just end up with the same being obvious so you can, if you can hide it by just breaking it up at the side where it's not so obvious or the back it's been very convenient so selecting everything we can do you to unwrap it and yeah we have it um, ready um, it's always advice like for stuff like this you could find a way to make it um, it's kind of a cylinder a rectangular shape um, it will help the texture greatly there are a lot of add-ons in blender that does that I can't really find mine that I used to use um, let's see uh, I think it's called UV squares um, it's a good solution for that uh, but you can select edge loop and do scale x0 so it's going to also fix that issue scale x0 scale x0 so it's a bit more tedious compare um, so you can select this and do ctrl v just paste it to kind of um, fix the di any distortion so scale x0 scale x0 okay and finally this one So you could even go further by doing a scale y zero uh, but I'm, I'm not really cut out for that now uh, like i said there's an add-on that does this quickly for you um, so you can check it out it's called uv square so just just automatically select everything and make it how it's supposed to be okay so we'll select this object and to kind of check out our uvs to make sure they are good so i'll create a new material and call this uv test um, select the color to be using a, an image texture click on new I will set this to because I plan to use a 2k texture so that's usually 20 by 48 and importantly the generated type should be switched from blank to UV grid so once you do that you can see how your UV is look, uh, looking so um, um, currently the scaling is a bit off um, I want to try something so if I UV unwrap it to see if the default gives a better result um, it does um, but we can fix that by I don't know, selecting this and scaling it slightly so that the details are kind of consistent so once you're done you can select and do park UV Alliance I, I, Island sorry it's going to pack everything nicely Okay, so let's do the pants now. And I will show you how you can combine everything and still maintain a relatively good UV. So we'll create the seam there by selecting the edge loop, shift, alt, mount, click, click. And this is more easy. So we'll just select it like this, control E, maxim, and unwrap. Um, so this is, it's okay. Uh, we could, it could be better, especially with the rectangular shape which I talked about earlier so we can copy the material by hitting ctrl L link materials so we can see this has a descent a pretty good UVs and the textures will be distributed nicely and for the socks we can select it um, we can just do one part because we have not applied any modifier so we'll select this part we'll break it up here We'll also break it up here so maxim unwrap so i'll apply the mirror and let's unwrap it one more time let's link the materials uh, okay so it's big it's coming together nicely um so like i said we want to combine them so let's see we have this looking good we have this looking good and we have this looking good so we'll just select the three of them and selecting them will hit you pack islands so basically it's going to just nicely distribute them based off the initial unwrapping we did so as you know if you notice i kind of scale this neck part specifically to make it more even with the rest of the uv grid um, so that was going to retain that retain that when we use the park island um, operation in blender 
so now we have it all set um, so they can share one texture um, which is quite convenient um, for kind of building things up okay so let's get into the material section um, this is going to be a fun part um, so if you want to go back to the material um, without if you want to see through the texture you can come here and click it if you want to go back to the material this is it so here in the node um, we'll try to texture everything in blender um, I have downloaded um, some textures which will save us time um, because imagine us trying to recreate the Barcelona um, logo um, good luck with that I mean we could do it if we want to do it but um, this just saves us time and I also have this nice Nike like kind of logo and I also have this so we'll be projecting all of that on top of the base jersey okay um, so let's get started this will be quite fun so we'll be using a lot of masks we'll using a lot of vertex group colors to kind of break things up so let's start with switching to EV and I'll give this a quick material um, I'll make it a diffuse shader and just something like this kind of like a template and since we already have this applied I can just quickly name this jersey and let's give it a color so we can see if all of them are working nicely okay and now um, let's go ahead and start so I would add a color or a mix okay so we know that the jersey the known color of Barcelona jersey it's um, the um, kind of red and blue so that's what we're going to do and then we're going to use a mask to kind of separate that so to kind of make it more nice so if your producer wants you to kind of adjust things um, you can quickly do that for him uh, so for that we'll add an, an image texture set it to 2k texture importantly you want to switch this part to blank and we'll call this jersey color mask okay uh, we'll set it to white so it's quite visible and we'll make this the factor so we could um, easily um, use EV to texture paint but I want us to just focus on getting the mask to look nice so we we'll switch to texture so basically um, the mask how it will work is that we have a white and black value so we want um, we we'll basically determine will the black mean a red color and we we'll basically have to determine what the black and white will mean so the black will mean the red and the white will mean the blue so since we already have white so we already have the blue color um, so we can hit N to bring out the stool panel here you can have all the access or access to the texture painting tool um, you also have more convenient settings right here if you click and right click think here where's that header show to settings so I have a shortcut for that which is alt F1 so it's just easy to do that okay so we'll switch this color to a black color um, we'll enable X symmetry so if we draw in one part it kind of propagates to the other side so we'll draw so one thing you can do in mask look it's good we already have like just the shirt separated even though they share the same texture so in a situation whereby you have like both of them in the same if you have all the objects con um, combined you can use the isolation technique whereby if you want to just paint on a certain area you can go in edit mode select the set that certain area and go to your texture paint mode and if you click on this it's only going to let you paint within this area so that's one nice tip okay so now let's basically start I will add an X mirror and increase the strength to one 
I will go to the redis factor because I don't currently this looks doesn't look sharp enough it looks rounded at the edge so I want to set this to constant so we kind of have this a more strict uh, a more sharp um, edge it might look a bit um, j j um, jack it might look a bit um, rugged at the edge um, so we, we can fix that by trying this one so this is kind of better okay so if you go to stroke type you can select line okay so if you select the line it will allow you to draw a line and it's going to place the jersey there okay so that's one um, also if you want to draw at one so we can just um, just draw in the front and then it propagates and at the back what we can do is to go option just uncheck this so now if we do something like this it's going to propagate to the back side so let's draw the line so this is uh, it's gonna be our uncustom style jersey um, okay so let's try something like this I think this was the older the, the older jersey that Barcelona used the one that had less kind of complexity to the lines it was more just a bunch of lines um, okay so I mean this is not perfect but it's close enough uh, so I'm just going to enable this because it's quite useful and I want to make this region uh, solid uh, to make it bring it back white because that's going to be where the blue color uh, the blue color is going to also show here so okay so like I told you earlier we can select this and it's going to isolate that I'll switch this to face and fill so it just cuts it off right there. Um, okay, so we are good. So we can quickly test it out. See how it's looking. I will set the roughness high. Okay, so let's do the pants now. So for the pants, kind of basically the same thing. Uh, but before that, let's go ahead and save this. Save ours. Uh, you can save it anywhere you want. So for the pants, um, we'll do the same thing. So texture paint mode, switch this to draw by using the tools. Um, symmetry, of course. Um, no need for symmetry because we'll just be filling out half of it. So once we'll select the half, We'll switch it to this and set the color to black and we'll fill it so we should have it looking this way and immediately let's jump into the socks uh, okay so for the socks we'll be using this returning of this occlude feature and setting it back to draw and we'll be using the stroke type of line so you can easily hit on E to bring this up the stroke method so you can easily switch so let's turn, off, turn on our symmetry and just draw so let's see why is this not working okay so if your symmetry is not working um, one way blender helps to kind of create a symmetry is to make sure you do origin to geometry which you could find here set origin to geometry so if the pivot point um, it's in the center then it will work if not it will not work okay so now if we have our symmetry it should work as it's meant to work okay Okay, so we'll save the image 
and let's look at what we have so we still need some adjustment um, which um, we'll have to do so bring this up and then what we want to do is just copy the colors basically Okay, so let's um, start building the material. So we want to get like the cloth details basically. Um, but before that, let's make make this a little more interesting. Um, so I want to add like extra layer patterns because it helps bring out the chevron shown in the jersey. Um, just any nice pattern that you can duplicate a couple of times. So I will add, let's see, nice one. And I'm not talking about the bump, I'm just talking about the material itself. So let's add this and I'll add the transform tool. Let's set this to about 5 or 15. Let's try generated and see what we get. Um, okay, it's not looking good. Okay, so like I said, we can create multiple masks um, for different sections. Um, which we could do for kind of having this rotate differently than we want. So, because if I do 90 degrees, um, it actually looks nice, so we'll do that. Um, 25. Okay, and then I will add another mix, mix um, value. And just basically play with different blending types so right up the back I like this one which is dark ducking I'll set this to be the new color so it's adding another level of complexity so I don't want it to affect this particular color I want something else to affect it and a quick quick way to generate mask is using the vertex paint so Selecting this vertex paint, I will um, just create, um, just go to the vertex paint, switch this to black color and shift K. It's going to create that. But importantly, since multiple objects are using the same vertex paint, we need to go to those objects and just create new vertex paint layers. Okay. Um, so once we do that, it's going to isolate um, those parts. So I will click here and this is the first first versus paint and if I come here to preview so we can see that the, the only place affected by this vertex paint is the the place that has a lighter color so this has a darker color and it won't be affected by it so as you can see um, so we want to now make one to be affected to affect the socks itself so we'll create a new we just basically import a new texture so we can import anything that feels like cutting or basically the material itself so let's look for one um, i have okay something like this looks like rough four to make it a bit fluffy so let's preview how it looks um the twin dirty okay and so I want it to influence the color basically. Um, so I'll add it here. So it's influencing it um, nicely. So I can set this to something higher. Um, rotate this 90 degrees to get a different effect. And so for the isolation, I'll basically add a con color invert node. So it's basically inverting the effect. So it's going to affect just the black colors now. And it's not going to affect um, the white colors so this is what we have so you can also use those marks marks to affect the alphas too if needed and you can always go back and change it um, so let's set this to maybe 20 so it's a bit obvious because we are proud of our work <laughs> uh, let's see if we can get a better effect from that So 
so it's color dark uh, let's go back to what it was which is darken okay um, now let's do for the roughness um, let's do let's create a nice bump so it's basically the same thing we're using mask to kind of control how we want different parts to be influenced so depending on the kind of the material of the clothing um, so you probably want to go for something different so let's see what I have here um, let's use this one okay so I will add a transform and scale this up by 120 times which might be a lot so let's do 60 okay and then we'll add the color misc for now we'll just set it to 100 and let's create one for the socks so it could be the same texture but bigger um, so one way to kind of um, have the same transform affects two objects differently or different textures differently it's let's do vector and if I remember this um, vector mat okay um, we'll do multiply let's try two a point three um, point two so it's just to reduce the amount of noise we're getting here okay so now we'll basically connect this texture here and we can switch between the two of them and now we use this mask that we created in the vertex group as a factor now um, so we just need to switch the connection so as you can see we have two different um, sizes of the textures and that's what we use so importantly I will click on clamp and then add a bump node connect it so it's quite strong so we'll reduce it so one way to kind of have different effects because I like a slightly I kind of like how it looks in the socks, I want it to be a bit pronounced with the socks, which I need to make a bit smaller. So point five, um, point three. So I like the effect to be a bit pronounced with the socks, like this. And I want to really sit here. So it's quite easy to do. What we can just basically do is add a you can do it with so many things you can add an RGB curve yeah and just reduce it basically reducing the brightness of the color uh, we can create our own um, our own custom roughness map but it's, it's, this is fine so I just added like a subdivision Okay, so it's coming together nicely. Um, the next step is adding those logos and decals. Because um, what we have now is like we have a nice procedural texture that we can... Not really procedural, but you get what I mean. It's a nice custom stuff that we can always change the color and change things. And if you're happy with it, you can bake it down. So uh, let's add those decals, like the texture of the... The logos and everything to kind of uh, make the, our life easy let's go to Photoshop so here in Photoshop I will set the project file to 5000 by 5000 because I want to put so many textures into one so I'll create okay and then I'll just go ahead and open all the textures I have um, to it. so I want this and this so open 
so I will copy this and paste it here so let's just have some visibility for now I'll paste it here you don't have to scale it or anything just leave it as default then I want to copy this text um, I will go to filter if I'm select color range and just select the white color so I will copy and paste so we have this here and for the logo which is already transparent and I got it on Google uh, we can paste it here so this is basically what we're needing I also want to create like a number so let's give it 10 and scale out the texture to something high like 300 okay so basically anything you want to paste um, you can also determine the color right here so let's say let's go for a nice gold yellow okay and the player name let's go with the pop most popular and i know he's not in barcelona again but it's quite known so let's do messy okay so once you're done with this we can turn off the background since it's a transparent image and save it anywhere so i'll save it to my desktop i'm going to save leave it as a psd file so i can come back and make any changes in the future if i want that so yeah yeah in blender i will create a new i will duplicate this and i can go here node reset node it's going to set back to default and create a new texture and call this um decal okay and make out leave alpha checked and come here in the color and set the alpha to zero and hit okay and then i will plug it as a factor Okay, this is what we have now. So I'm going to use EV turned on because without EV turned on, we should have it as transparent. Okay, so EV will help us kind of have a real time feedback how it's going to look. So I will switch texture, turn off the symmetry, come to texture here and clean, click on new set this to stencil and i will come to this texture tab and basically go and locate where i have the texture set so make sure make sure the aspect ratio is same with the image so you just click on image aspect it's going to scale up the image reset transform viewers render um alpha i'll tell it to calculate alpha so it will smooth out the alpha thing so sampling, I want to set Gaussian filter. Um, let's see. Okay, so I think we are all set. So we can come here, scale it down slightly. Just align it. Okay, and make sure your color is set to 100% white. So it's you're going to use the real color of the object, of the um, texture. Um, also, let's make sure we have this checked so it's, it doesn't go through the mesh. And now we can just paint. So like I said, you can hit E to bring this up. So we set this back to space. Let's just paint. Um, let's see what the problem is okay so it's just assuming that it based on our node setup it's just setting it to white which is this color so we want to tell it to use this um the textures to okay so let's do messy right here Okay, it's a bit big so let's scale it down okay and here in the logo
just paint it in um, for the sponsors. Okay, and then we have our Nike sign. <sighs> okay, so it seems quite big. Okay, so you can always go in and delete it when if you don't want that again. So let's create add the logo here too. Oh, I'm selecting the wrong object. So select this object. Paint that in. Get this nice, um, the Nike sign. Paint that in. Okay, so we're almost set. So. They have the Nike sign on the socks. I'm using the reference too. Wrong object. <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll turn off symmetry because it's not behaving as it should. So let's try flipping the axis. like this okay um, let's see if I need to, uh, we're missing anything it's not 100 one to 100 percent like accurate but it's close enough so let's do save as decals so you can always go in and change it later so now, if we want to enhance this to kind of give it some depth, uh, we can easily create a new bump map and use the alpha as the height. Okay, and that doesn't seem to be working. Let's use the color. Okay, so that works. We can just add some depth and we can also use it as a roughness value. Um, we'll just connect the alpha to the roughness, add a color ramp. So the alpha doesn't want to cooperate. <laughs> okay, or better still, let's see what we have here. So I want this logo part to all be white. So what I would do is kind of increase this to a high value like this. And I'll probably use that as the alpha. Okay. So all we need to do now is invert this color. So this place has more specularity. Okay, and then I will add a mix, mix RGB. So basically how roughness works is if it's dark, then it's going to be more shiny. And if it's white, it's going to be less. It's going to be raw far. So something like this. And you can always add like a color. You can always add like a matte node here. Switch this to multiply and adjust this to your liking okay so we are almost done now i'm going to enable ambient occlusion in eevee let's look even nicer okay so next i think we are done if you're happy with this and you want to proceed um, okay, one more thing. I mean, we can keep pushing this as far as we want. We could kind of sculpt in higher details and bake in the map, um, which is 
quite straightforward actually especially if, um, if you want to use blender if you want to use ZBrush you can do it um, just add extra layers of details uh, if you pop to simulate it then you can get that for free through the cloud simulation um, if we if you want to have like pre-made ones then you can bake it um, with high resolution to low poly uh, resolution sculpting okay so if we're happy with this we can bake out the color we can bake out maps so that um, we we don't have this complex node uh, but if you want to have this so that you can always go back and change things then you're fine um, so that'll be it for this tutorial um, the next part of this tutorial will just be me trying to create an animation and simulating it if you want to stay for that you're welcome um, but the creating of the jersey is done um, so I'll be using an add-on to quickly just rig this guy up and animate it so the add-on is Poopa of course so I'll call this um, player okay volume so this it's basically using rigify as the engine uh, but it gives you access to quickly rig up your character and apply quick animations so any information you need about all of these will be in the description so you can check it out yourself. So I plan to kind of simulate it and I'll rig animate and simulate everything now. So you can see the workflow. Okay, so once we have this, um, let's bind it. So I'll preview the rig. Just kind of fix all the starting point and make sure everything is looking good. Um, okay, so go ahead and bind it. I'll use voxel binding. Okay, so it's done now, and uh, let's see. We have the character rig nicely. Um, okay. So we probably have to go in and kind of fix some things. So let's do that. So I will select the head. So we first select the bone and the head. That's basically how you do weight painting in Blender. So select the spot, assign smooth it out basically using the smooth operation here which i've added to my quick favorite and then i didn't want the neck to influence the head so smooth that out let's see still so remove smooth this out okay um so let's do for the shirt So we want this to only influence the sleeves so remove so you can go to edit last operation and increase the amount of the smooth so I'm gonna set this to 12 so it kind of works faster so let's do 8 okay same with the shoulders I only want you to influence enough but not so much um, so let's do the same thing here okay so we need to fix this um, so wait
okay so just smoothing it out will kind of fix that and once you're done you can just clear the white paint enable IK okay so we have it behaving nicely so one thing we can do when you have clothing and you, you don't want to see through it is you can select parts that are problematic and come here and click on add new group so we'll call this mask or cloud mask okay and then we'll come here in the modifier select that cloud mask invert it and smooth this is a new blender awesome feature for the mask so now we can move this how we like and it just works so for the animation um, let's look for something sport animation um, there's a soccer okay so we have let's see what this is Okay, so I like that. Let's see if we can get any other one. Okay, I like the soccer one. Okay, so once we are happy with the re um, animation, let's just add like a prop object. So for the prop object, we'll add like a quick, just a simple sphere. Not going too crazy. And we can actually add like a nice texture. Um, for that, I will just Google um, soccer ball texture. Um, let's just find one this will do it might not be perfect um, so we'll go to tool set this to large size this helps let's grab this one uh, looking for the perfect one let's just do this oh no it has okay let's use this okay so after a long deliberation i found one i like um i just quickly open that image so probably do some nice changes here so in the um node editor can add um, the by control T when using the node Wrangler node. I'll set this to generate. Okay, it's, that's not good. Let's do UVs. Okay, so we'll probably have to go into the UV editor and kind of move things around to make it look nice. I mean, it's not perfect, but it does the job. And here I will use this as a bump map information. Something like this. And let's add some roughness <laughs> while we're at it. Uh, I'll use a grunge. Use this as the roughness. Then I will add a color mix. mix. So I'll use a factor to control the visibility 
and use this color to control the roughness. Okay, so we have a nice camera here. Anyway, so let's just keep moving. And now we'll do a little animation. So it it runs and right here. Just position positioning it. So so we want it to go. Let's determine the trajectory. So from here, we can use like an annotation tool. It goes like this. Okay. Um, let's just create the posing first. We'll still have to clean up stuff later. Okay, so now we just need to get the timing um, correctly. So, to speed it up some more so I'll put my cursor here and just get it Boom. A little rolling. Um, what I will do now is just bring out the graph editor, kind of play with things a little bit. So I will delete this keyframe and we'll use the graph editor oh nice it's looking much better so this is going down quite fast and we'll extend this slightly okay so we don't need the graph editor for this instance so it's working actually like it Let's give it a nice color. Let's switch this to principal BSDF. Okay, um, now let's just clean up our scene. I'll go to view, annotation, I'll remove that. I'll hide my rig. And we have our animation. Okay, so for the cloth simulation, um, let's tackle that next. So I will select this and for the start frame, I'm going to set it to um, negative 
think this cannot go lower than that so for that um, if I'm not wrong you need to go to view um, sync visible range negative four. so it's view it's not that anyways what I was trying to do is I want the cloud simulation to start before the animation so everything is kind of settled so I will in frame one um, frame negative 17 I will insert a keyframe there I'll duplicate it slightly a bit to about frame negative 7 and so before it gets to frame 0 it's already positioned and it's simulating there okay so um, setting up the um, animation um, the kind of groups that you, the setting up the pinning of the object because right now if we're to select the clothing okay and go to cloud simulation and hit cloud uh, we have this set collision and well that's it I will turn off the mask for now we can see it's falling along but it's ripping off because we need to pin certain parts so for that we'll go inside and a quick way to just select the pin it's to select the sims um, the sims which you created and do shift G um, select sims okay and then this is what we'll be using as the pin group if you don't have sims in your object and your object already has like a UV you can select the UV and go to UV sims from island and then it will create sims and then you can select the sims and do shift G sims I will create this and call this pin group okay and then here in the cloud simulation you want to go to shape and select pin group now if we play it, it should behave much better so let's move the subdivision down depending on the kind of details you want to maintain so make this a collision object, which it is already. Okay, so this actually is looking nice. Um, let's see, do we want to maintain the structure? I'll reduce it. I'll switch this to linear and just reduce the structure to about five. Let's see. And when we're baking it finally, we can now turn on like um, the self collision to fix some issues. Okay, so that looks good and we can go ahead and bake it. So for the baking, I'll set the quality steps to about eight. Um, the collision I'll increase it to five um, this is just best now I my computer can handle it so that's why I'm kind of having fun with it so the self collision I will set it to um, importantly the distance um, if it's higher it's going to be it's going to perform better because the collision will detect it ha um, faster uh, but if you reduce distance it's going to be faster so I'll set this to point zero zero one okay and I will go ahead and bake that so okay so this only allows to zero so uh, we can work with that so just quickly bake out this animation which is quite fast as you can see I forgot to switch the end to 44 but it's okay we can just stop it once it gets there okay so So one thing I'm going to do is here in the subdivision we have it in the viewport level um, using one so I'm going to set it to one also in the render and then add another subdivision on top of that to, um, to be what is going to render later. So this will be set to render one and I can set it to zero. So we're still getting the two subdivision levels but um, you know what I mean. Okay so for the pants we're basically going to do the same thing. Uh, we'll select the seams, one of the seam, and do shift 
G seems and we'll create a new vertex group. I say we'll call this cloth pin. And hit assign. So we'll make this a cloth object linear. Select the cloth pin. And right here we can just set it to 44. Stats animation at frame zero. Let's play. Okay, so um, right here, um, let's add more subdivisions. So we'll add a subdivision before the cloth. And we want to select this object because we made some changes earlier whereby we changed the thickness. So instead of just guessing, let's get back to the default value. So the thickness was 0 0.002. So I'll just copy that and paste that here. This was 0 0.2. And Let's go ahead and preview. Okay, so we can bake it and other penetrations we can hide it with mask. Um, so I'll go ahead and bake this. So by default, the, the default is fine. And we don't need self collision because so far it's behaving pretty nice, so it's fine. Okay, so let's get this problematic area using the mask. I will enable the mask and it's gonna hide that. We'll have to do that for the leg. So I'm going to enable edit mode preview of the um, the geometry and also preview the mask edit mode so we can see what we are hiding. I will select this part because it showed the stomach region one time. So we'll leave that. So I'm going to add it to, clo oh no, wrong guy. Yeah, cloth mask. So right here, it kind of reveals the stomach. So let's remove that. So I will not preview the mask again. And I'll select this region and remove it from the cloth mask group. So, and also select slightly some of this and remove. Okay, so you want to go around and check to make sure nothing is being hidden. That you need to see <laughs> nice nice as crack uh, okay so, so it's looking almost there some here okay I think we're all set and we can see our material. I might want to, I might need to adjust the clothing slightly, the shirt. I'm going to ink, um, I'm going to increase the band. Okay. And the structure, increase it to like 30. So you have some more stiffness because it's quite wobbly here. And I will bake that again. This is like looking like a full on workflow tutorial, but it's fine. Okay. It works, but I forgot to turn on the collision, the mesh mask. So I'll turn that on for this instance. So set this to a collision object. Let's pick that again. Okay, so it's done and we can preview it. And turn on my mask.
So for stuff like this, um, this is like a quick fix. Um, so we are getting cloud penetrating around this region at a particular time of the animation. So I will um, create a new vertex group and call this adjust cloak. Okay, and right here I will add a displace modifier and select the adjust cloud. Set this to zero and reduce this value. And then add the subdivision after that. So since it's just this, um, timing the animation, so I will also go in and just blend this some more. Okay, so just here. We want that. Let's see it with the subdivision. Hide this for now. Okay, so once it's like this, um, I will insert a keyframe right here. So at this point, we don't need it. So we'll set this to zero or slightly. Set this to zero right here. Yeah, so we think I think we need it more than we know. Or is it some more? And set it to zero. So fix that quickly. Inside keyframe. Move it out slightly. Okay. So right here. And once we add the displays, then we can add like a smooth modifier and move it above the subdivisions. And we want to use the cloud adjust and smooth it out so we don't have it's not obvious that we did anything there. So you can this is how you can kind of fix your cloud simulation after the fact, especially if you don't want to resim it. So now let's prepare for rendering. So add the plane. Switch to edge, extrude it upwards, bevel it, scale it out, smooth, control D, just basically applying a subdivision. Or you can select the edges and do shift E to add like um, an edge, what do you call that again? Crease. Let's preview. So we'll set this to a dark diffuse color. I'll increase the roughness slightly. So let's see. So I'll move this back on the y axis a bit. I mean, there are a lot of things you can use to fix. Um, the animation with Popa tools, but we'll not fix that. Let's see, is it touching the floor? No, it's not. Um, like this. So we'll have to fix the animation. Now I'm a bit extra, but oh, I like it. So we need to adjust it slightly at this position. So if you have Popa, this is quite easy, and you can do it with your curve modifier so i mean we can just fix the key from ourselves actually i'm um, need for unnecessary complex complexity um okay so okay it's looking much better
I think we kind of messed this up. Okay, I see what's happening. So rather, I will move the plane since we already baked out our simulation. And I'll move this in edit mode slightly on top. Okay, so we can go ahead and render this. I will set the focal length to about 80. Let's get a nice camera angle. Just experiment and see. Okay, so that's not good. Um, I want to catch the ball moving. Okay, so I think we are all set to render, and I will go ahead and render it. Uh, before, before we do that, I will just duplicate this and kind of position it so it's kind of like an endless loop. To even make it look cool, I'll just set it to green. It feels like green screen. Oh, let's do blue screen. Okay, so for the lighting, um, let's switch to our scene mode. Basically, that's what we're using to render. And you can just use the H HDR to kind of position this. And I think we're done. We can add quick sound effect, which I will just download one now. Okay, so I've gotten some sounds from the free sound.org. Okay, and then we can go to video editing. And let's add the sounds. So I have my download music. Set it to the 3D view. Okay, so. Okay. And let's add this cheering crowd. The quick stuff you can do to your sound is kind of trim it at the end so it doesn't just cut off. 
um, how do you K so cuts it and then we'll just animate uh, let's see we have this effect fade out okay so So I like how it's looking. Okay, so that's it. Um, let's go ahead and render this. I will let's see what cycles give us. If if it's better than cycles, then so I rendered it now and we see we get this error here. This error is just because of we the modifier is not behaving as it should for the especially for the cloth. So we have it rendering at one in viewport. So you, this is what happens when it's rendering at two. So we just need to fix that, set it to one, and also add another subdivision later, set it to one. So we will render it in cycles. This is what it gives us. But if we let's try EV to see if we can still eat our cake and have it. So I like the effect of Psychos much better. So I will render it in Psychos. So you guys will see the result. And thank you so much for watching. I hope this was very informative. Um, I actually just wanted to show you how you can create the cloth, but it got crazy. Um, so yeah, so thank you for watching. Bye bye for now. See you next time.